All right, for simplicity's sakes, I'm actually really working on a project that can use a BAQ um, <clears throat> custom filter. We're using BAQ data views and a custom data view, so I figured what a better example than one that I'm actually working on. So I'm working on a screen that allows you to copy one part's uh, inventory to another part's inventory. It's an unrelated project, doesn't matter why, but that's what we're at. So I just threw the screen out, there's no code here yet. So there's two grids here that are gonna be driven by a BAQ that I wrote, actually a BAQ that Brandon wrote. This BAQ is just a list of the part bin content. There's no filters, it's just a simple <coughs> part list, uh, part bin list, right? And what I wanna do is I wanna be able to type a part number up here and here, and on the left grid, show me the front part bin, and on the right screen, show me the two part bin. This could be easily accomplished using a standard dashboard, but right now we're trying to uh, test this out by using the, um, sorry, I wanted to make sure this thing was recording, um, by using the custom data view uh, method. So let's take a look at that. So I already have the BAQs written, and I already have the screen laid out because that takes a little while. But uh, other than that, uh, I'll walk through the process. So like I said, the first thing to do is to tie the filters or the tracker at the top to a custom data view. So that's what we're going to do first. Um, the first thing we need for that is we need a table to hold our data. So data table uh, DT dupe parts. It's just a simple data table. We also need a custom data view. So that's gonna be a data view uh, DB dupe parts. And that's as simple as it gets. Um, I also wanna be able to, again, drive the bottom two grids from a, that BAQ I wrote. So I need two BAQ data views. So again, BAQ data view, and we're gonna call this uh, BDB. I always like to start with the type of uh, view it is. And I'm gonna call the from PB info and uh, BDB to PB info. All right, so I have the BAQ data views in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is basically set up all our stuff. So I'm gonna create a function here, uh, set up custom data views, all right? And so public void set up custom data views. So again, the first thing I gotta do is I gotta create my custom data view that's going to hold my tracker at the top. Uh, and to do that, all I have to do is basically create a data table and f uh, and give it some fields. So that's the first thing I'm going to do here. I'm going to uh, instantiate my data table. And I'm going to add some columns to it, right? So I'm gonna need, uh, I'm gonna need a column for the front part and a column uh, for the two part. Uh, <clears throat> so again, I'm just gonna create a column here. We're gonna call this uh, var call from, oops, or from part. And I'm gonna say that this is a new data column and it's gonna be called just from part. All right, so that's a new data column. And then the, the thing that I want is that I wanna be able to do things like open with. So I'm gonna set the extended properties of this column uh, like to be equals to part that part num. And again, all this is going to do is going to allow me to very easily do open with and searches and things like that. And so I'm gonna add that column to my data table. So I'm gonna say, uh, columns that add, and I'm gonna pass in my column from part. And again, I'm kind of in a rush, so I'm gonna only do one for now, but the principle applies to all the other columns. The other thing to keep in mind is that the data views expect a Cicero ID, that is a default column that uh, Epicor expects to be there, and it helps with all the Epi magic. So whenever you're opening and making a custom table, uh, make sure you include a Cicero ID the column. So I'm gonna say columns that add new data column, and I'm gonna call it Cicero ID, and I'm gonna give it a type of good, because that's what it is. All right, so there we are. So we have our table, all right? Um, and that table is going to drive our custom data view. So the first thing I wanna do is I wanna fill in that table with an empty row. And what that's gonna do is allow me to type into the fields and not make, make sure that they're not disabled. So to do that, I simply am going to create a new row. So I'm gonna call uh, data row equals to new row. And I'm gonna fill in my um, sys row ID here with, um, I'm gonna fill it in with a, uh, and a, just a GUID, right? The other field, the part number field, the front part number is gonna be blank and that's okay. So then I'm gonna add that row back to my table. 
and now I have an empty row. I still have not added this to my data view, so I'm going to now spin up or instantiate my data views. Data view, I gave it a name here of DV duplicate dupe parts, and I'm going to say DV dupe parts is equals to new epi data view. This is a custom data view that I'm created, creating rather, sorry. Uh, and then I'm going to set the data view data view equals to my uh, data table default view. Um, and the default view is basically an unfiltered view of the whole entire table. And then I'm going to add this to my OTRANS. OTRANS that uh, add, and I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this my tracker view. It doesn't matter what you call it. Um, and I'm going to add that to OTRANS. And what that's going to do uh, is going to basically set up my data table and allow me to create bindings and register with OTRANS. So for example, if I were to save this as is and close out, and assuming I spelled everything correctly, um, I should be able to go back in here and open this up. And nothing looks different except you will see that now I have bindings that I can attach to my uh, text box. So. <clears throat> hopefully, if I did it right, I should be able to take this guy here and bind it to my tracker view, which should now be on my list. So here's a tracker view, and there's my front part. So now that is bound to my tracker view, all right? So now the next thing I want to do is I want to initialize this front part bin to use my BAQ data view. So I'm going to do that in here too. And again, I'm going to simply uh, register my, my BAQ data view. So I'm going to say BDB from info equals to new BAQ data view. And I'm going to drive that off of the BAQ that I showed you earlier. I have the name of it written over here. So I'm going to simply register that uh, view. And I'm going to add it to OTRANS. When I add it to OTRANS, that allows me what to bind to it. So I'm going to say from part bin view. Um, and I'm going to pass that in. So now this is a BAQ data view, but it is an unfiltered BAQ data view, and I don't want to do that. What I want is, is to be filtered by whatever it is I type into this from part. And for that, we can use publish and subscribe. Um, so the first thing I got to do is I got to declare a publish binding. I got to tell Epicor that whenever there's a change to the from part record up here, I want to be notified of that by by receiving a publishing uh, a publishing. Um, event. So I'm going to declare a uh, from PB binding, and I'm going to make that equals to the name of my view and the field that I want to publish. So it's going to be tracker view dot from part. And again, this is just telling Epicor that, hey, whenever that field changes, let me know. Um, and so I'm going to say otrans that publish column change. And again, I get uh, I want to publish this column change. So whenever this column changes, I want it to be published. And I'm going to give this a name. It's going to say from uh, pb pub. It doesn't really matter what you call it. It does need to be unique across Epicor. So get creative with it, or use a GUID, uh, which is uh, sometimes helpful. Um, publish column change the binding. What is it complaining about? A transaction. Did I spell that wrong? Hold on. Let's take that over there. <clears throat> Publish column change, a binding and a string. O trends that publish. I spelled publish wrong, that's why. All right, so now I'm publishing an event every time that column changes, which is cool. So then I want to get a hold of the publisher. So I'm going to say uh, from pub is equals to otrans that get publisher. And I'm going to get, again, the publisher from that binding. So this is me now register an intent to subscribe to that event. Um, so I'm saying, hey, whenever this happens, I want to be notified, and I want to be notified in this publisher here. And then I want to simply register a subscription to that publisher in my data view. So my BDV from Parbin Info, I'm simply going to subscribe to publisher. And the publisher is my from pub dot publish name. And I'm going to subscribe to the field part bin underscore part num. Again, what this does is it says, hey, whenever this field changes, I want you to subscribe my BAQ to that event and, re and basically do a where clause where it filters this field on the BAQ. So if I did all that correctly, I should have a new grid that I can bind to my uh, 
to my uh, sorry a new data view that I can bind to my grid, uh, and then if I make a change to this field, it should automatically refresh and publish the grid for me. I'm going to go ahead and bind my grid uh, ahead of time. It's not in the drop down yet because I haven't closed and opened the, the the screen, but I know what I called it. So I'm going to take a risk here and and put it in there and and hope that it doesn't explode on me. If I typed everything correctly, it shouldn't. And again, this is a very quick and dirty example. I got a, a, a lot of work to do here. So now I have, you notice how it actually has uh, labels now? That means that my grid publishing or my grid binding work. Notice I can also do open with here. So my like control worked. And now what I said is I should be able to type in a part number. So let's pick one here, 1003. Uh, and this should automatically publish that to my grid. Uh, so no, not enough zeros. And there you go. So now you can see that this grid down here is published to changes at the top. So if I change this at the top, it automatically refreshes the grid at the bottom. And the same thing would happen on this one if I had it wired up. So hopefully this helps. Let me know if you have any questions.